Good Sunday morning, and welcome to the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review. We welcome you on this first day of May. Thank you. You have tuned into the right place to receive whatever it is that you are seeking from God today. Our subject of discussion, our topic for review is titled Healing the Blind Man. Again, Healing the Blind Man. Praise God. This is lesson number nine for those of you who follow along with us weekly. The Bible basis or the context and content of our review is based upon St. John, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 17. Praise God. I thank God for the leaders of the Unity Church of God in Christ, our pastor, Pastor Anthony Rogers, our First Lady, First Lady Charlene Rogers, and the Facebook, the YouTube, the Unity Collaborative Community. We thank God again for you, and we say welcome. We thank God for the Sunday School Superintendent, Deacon Joe Daniels, and his companion, Sister Annie Daniels, the two working closely together to ensure that we have our Sunday School material so that we can study and explore God's Word. Hallelujah. And I thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to share His Gospel, His good news by way of Sunday School on this Sunday morning. Our memory verse, the verse that we hold true to our heart this week as we do so many other things. God's Word, it inspires, it motivates Hallelujah, and it provides the necessary wherewithal so that we may, we can, and we will continue forward. God's word by way of memory verse comes to us from that ninth chapter of the book of John, that 16th verse specifically. The King James Version and the New International Version will be read respectively. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was division among them. Some of the Pharisees said, as we read the New International Version, This man is not from God, for he does not keep it. Excuse me, he does not keep the Sabbath. But the others asked, how can a sinner perform such miracles, such signs? So they were divided. Praise God. Our lesson aim reads as follows. By the end of this lesson, we will know, reflect, and participate. Three suggestive instructions as it re reflects to an aim and or a goal that we set before us this week. To number one, know that traditions should not be used to ignore human sufferings or needs. Number two, to reflect on a situation, make it personal, in which and are where we felt discriminated. And when you feel discriminated, you Hallelujah, recognize that there has been this distinction, some type of differentiation between you and or someone and or something else. A prejudicial distinction. Hallelujah. Praise God. Against you, you being ostracized, you reflect and again make it personal, reflecting on your history, reflecting on your past, how this made you feel. And when we do so, when we make it personal, then it allows us to participate in activities, in ways that help people in need. Praise God. The goal is to help people in need. 
as we ourselves have been helped in times past. And we thank God who holds our future and knows everything. Hallelujah. And there may be a time where we need help in the future. Therefore, we thank God for his word, giving sound instruction, advice on how we are to work and to look out for our brothers and sisters in Jesus. Those we know, those we do not know. Praise God. Our Bible truth, our Bible application, and our Bible learning read as follows. Bible truth, Jesus ministered to people by meeting their need. Bible application, to understand that Jesus expects us to participate in meeting the needs of others. Jesus expects us. Hallelujah, to participate. He wants to use us, help facilitate meeting the needs of others by way of you, by way of me. Hallelujah, I thank God for being in a position where I can be used. I thank God for you being in a position where you can be used. I thank God for Sunday school. I thank God for his word that continues to mold us and lifts us up, lets us know that we too can inspire someone in need, that we too, regardless of what we think of ourselves, there is someone we too can help, and he needs our help. And as we understand, this makes it personal, the truth of the matter and how we apply it. Praise God. Finally, as we learn Jesus in today's lesson, we learn from the fact that Jesus put the blind man's needs to see. Hallelujah. His ability to see, he put that, he placed that above the rules of the Jewish, hallelujah, leadership. About the Sabbath observance, Jesus saw the need and placed the need above the rule. Praise God, the Bible truth and the Bible application and Bible learning, again, make it personal. They help us apply God's word appropriately. They help us rightly divide his word truthfully. We thank God for our Sunday school lesson on today. People of God, last week we reviewed Jesus speaking to the Samaritan woman. The focus of last week's lesson was Jesus speaking to a Samaritan woman, offering her an opportunity to change her life, to change her experiences, to change her trajectory forever. Hallelujah. If you recall, however, in, in order for Jesus to have this conversation to come by way of chance, hallelujah, and we know it wasn't, but had the opportunity to meet this Samaritan woman, it was necessary for him to travel through rough terrain, hallelujah, to be where she was, but Jesus was willing to do so. He made his way to her to have the ability to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Jesus spoke directly to her situation and eliminated, if we can recall from last week, cultural and religious barriers of difference. Praise God. We know Jesus speaks to conditions 
regardless of how challenging or difficult we may perceive a situation. Hallelujah. Jesus speaks to your case. Jesus speaks to your plight. Jesus speaks to your situation. This week we have an insight into a condition or to the status, hallelujah, in which some have noted and do note then and now there is no cure. There is no ability to correct and or heal. People of God, as we explore this week's lesson, let us take note. Let us recall what Jesus has done for us and what he's done through his word. And again, what we learned through last week, through, hallelujah, bad terrain, treacherous terrain, hallelujah, mountainside. Jesus made himself available to the Samaritan woman. This leads us to know that Jesus will find you and me anywhere, regardless of how difficult the situation, regardless of our ancestral background and heritage or DNA. Nothing is too hard. Nothing is too challenging. Hallelujah. God has given his son all power. And that power has been extended and given to meet the need of his people everywhere. As we look at tonight's, or excuse me, this week's lesson talking about blindness, hallelujah, this Sunday's lesson talking about Jesus healing the blind man, let's look at blindness when one is blind or impacted by being blind, they are unable, are nearly unable to see, hallelujah, because of a disease or congenital conditions. Praise God. A lack of vision, possibly vision that can never be corrected some by glasses and or some type of corrective lens and some by not, hallelujah, partial blindness, meaning limited vision. We know that there are studies out there that are conducted routinely in the National Institutes of Health just for an informative perspective conducted a study and found that although 94% of Americans between the ages of 12 and older, they have what it is qualified or they categorize as good vision, the remaining 6% equates to 14 million who are visually impaired. Praise God, of these 14 million, more than 11 million have uncorrected visual impairment, such as, praise God, nearsightedness. We thank God for his word. We thank God that it comes by way of Sunday school literature, Bible study, and by way of weekly sermons. His word comes to provide insight and knowledge to help us grow thereby. Although we're talking of a natural condition, there is spiritual blindness as well that impacts the human, hallelujah, the male, the female, the believer, the non-believer. We thank God for his son, Jesus, because Jesus has all power, the ability to heal the natural, hallelujah, soul that is blind and speak to the spirit as well. He is able to do abundantly, exceedingly above anything we ask of 
or think of him to do on our behalf. Hallelujah. Oh, this week, let us apply and make this lesson personal because we serve a God who can do anything but fail. Praise God, the income source of those who were blind at the time then was begging, requesting alms of passers-by. At that time, there were no governmental handouts or no charitable organizations. They were non-existent in that day and time. Hallelujah. There was rumored remedy, and I'm certain this was after the miraculous work of Jesus, of medicine. Hallelujah. Mud made from spittle. Praise God. Tonight's lesson in Sunday school, we're also talking, and I keep talking tonight. Praise God. Please forgive me. On this Sunday morning, the brightness of the day. Hallelujah. We also have some other characters that we should be aware of. Pharisees. They are referenced in today's lesson. We've had previous summations of Pharisees and what and who they represent. But briefly, just to refresh the memory, these individuals represent a group of Orthodox Jews strict in their belief and interpretation of the Mosaic Law. It was self-righteous in their, hallelujah, interpretation, self-righteous in their execution of judgment of the law. Hallelujah. And they felt because of their interpretation, because of their observation, they were superior. Praise God. The term Pharisee comes from a combination of Hebrew and Aramaic words, which mean one who is separated. We can only assume because of their superior nature or so they perceived they chose this because they were separated from others in the world. For example, Gentiles. Hallelujah. They felt they were impure. Hallelujah. Again, just trying to make sure we have an understanding of these individuals as we go through our review today. Part one on this Sunday morning. Part one of the blind man being healed by Jesus. Whose fault was it? Whose fault was it? Looking into John, that ninth chapter, verses one through seven, again, part one, as we break down the healing and deal, hallelujah, with the specifics of the circumstances that led up to the healing, there were questions that were posed, and one was asked, whose fault was it? Hallelujah. <laughs> As we explore whose fault was it, it reminds me of the what, how, why. Again, questions, what, how, why. What is going on? How is this possible? And why did this occur? Praise God. When something happens or when we see something that is of interest to us, good or bad, we want to know the specifics. It's human nature. Again, something good. We want to know how this was accomplished to ensure nothing will change. Nothing will change the sustainability to make sure it was lawful, to make certain it was expedient, 
when something bad takes place, we want to know what, how, why to eliminate this from reoccurring and are taking place again. We want to know these things to ensure comfort and our solution, our resolution is available to those who are impacted or affected. And for some, the what, the how, and the why are necessary not to criticize, but to have a clear, concise understanding. Today, we speak to those who earnestly seek additional clarification. The why, the how, the what. Glory to God. <laughs> Some want an answer because they want to understand how things happen to people from birth when seemingly the person has done absolutely nothing to justify the situation they have been born into. Born with a defect, birth defects, a shortcoming, an imperfection, or a lack. Again, people want to know whose fault why did this happen? How did this occur? And as we ponder, as questions are posed, then we begin to assess. And when you assess, at times you come to conclusions with no factual information. We come to conclusions with absolutely no Facts. I thank God for his word providing insight on how he speaks to our individual personal conditions. When he speaks to our conditions, the what, the how, and the why become irrelevant with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we look at that first verse, in part one, that ninth chapter, we see Jesus was en route to, he was going somewhere. He was about his way and en route to, en route to somewhere, he observed something. Hallelujah. I love God for his word and the insight it provides. People of God, in just reading that first verse, it let me know that we must be observant witnesses. Jesus was always observant of his surroundings. We see this by reading his word. He was and he is always. There's a phrase and term that is used today. It may even be outdated, but the term woke. Hallelujah. Jesus is always observant and woke. And he noticed a man with an impairment. He saw a man blind from birth. Praise God, Jesus in that eighth chapter was escaping from those who did not like him, those who even hated him. Hallelujah. This Jesus, although yet, hallelujah, in a mindset to escape, he was yet observant. Jesus was yet aware of, again, his surroundings, and looking out for those who were in need. We learn from our earlier review of the income source for someone blind at that time, it was minimal and are non-existent. This man was in desperate need for help or of help without the ability to see or navigate a way to help on his own. 
Hallelujah. A need for a way out, but no help to identify, no help to see or even find that way. Hallelujah. Some are in that condition or situation today. They need help. Help to identify, help to see, and help to find the way. I thank God again for the lessons that come weekly to help provide insight so that we know how to access the way. Hallelujah. Instructions that provide clear, concise direction. Those instructions give us the ability again, to help others in need find the way, the truth, and the light. Glory to God. As we look at that second verse in that ninth chapter, we see that Jesus was not alone. Praise God, he was with his disciples. He had his followers accompanying him, people who believed and trusted, but they had questions. They asked these questions and they sought clarity from Jesus because they believed in who he was. They wanted to know and so they approached him appropriately respectfully, Master Jesus, who did sin? They asked a question. Again, whose fault is it? Who did sin? This man or his parents in lieu of the fact that he is blind from birth. Some have, again, the belief that defects or imperfections and impairments happen because of sin. Sin is the root cause of this taking place. Sin is the root cause. Again, some people believe for defects, impairments, and imperfections. Some make the assumption that the sin of someone has resulted in the defect Depairment of an offspring. Hallelujah. I thank God for his word. We are not here to debate theories today. We are here to speak to the overwhelming power of his word to do the impossible. I thank God he does not hold me accountable for the sin of my parents nor does he hold them accountable for my sin. Hallelujah. It is certain we reap what we sow, but there is a place in, hallelujah, which those who sin willingly and continually, there is a place where they will be placed. Hallelujah. There is a price they will have to pay and that place is hell. Glory to God. And our pastor preached a few weeks ago that hell is enlarging itself. Hallelujah, per the word of God, per Isaiah 5 and 14. Therefore, imperfections, hallelujah, and impairments, oh, it does not have to be the root cause of sin, hell is enlarging itself to pay that penalty. As we look at the third verse, Jesus responds to the inquiry of his disciples, inquiring whose fault is it? What happened? Who sinned? The mother of a father. Let us know. We're curious. Glory to God. Again, Jesus provides insight. Jesus provides knowledge. Hallelujah. To those front 
line witnesses to those frontline individuals who will be witnesses on his behalf. He responded to their questions. He gave them insight because people of God, as we witness, as we speak to the needs of others, we should be aware that body language is important. What we perceive, our perceptions also impact our ability to speak to, to be observant, to identify the needs of others, and to respond appropriately to that need. Hallelujah, Jesus clarified that neither this man sinned, neither of his parents. He didn't sin, nor his parents. Neither, no one is to blame. Hallelujah, you cannot place blame. This was not specific to sin. Again, neither parent nor the man was responsible. Jesus clarified, this occurred, this happened, so the works of God could be made manifest or displayed directly in, displayed directly through this blind man. Someone who cannot see. People of God is being used today in this lesson to help everyone see what Jesus can do to meet your need. Again, someone who could not see in today's lesson is being used to highlight the fact that Jesus is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and that he can help us all see. This blind man is symbolically being used, hallelujah, to let us know that Jesus can remove the blinders or whatever it is that is blocking our vision, that is blocking our insight, that is blocking our ability to see the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus can then and he will now restore your vision naturally and spiritually to see and to follow him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As we look at those four and fifth verse, God used the unexpected to transform, to deliver and set free. Hallelujah again so that we and so that the blind man could see clearly. Jesus had a timeline. Again, talking about the fourth and fifth verse, people of God, Jesus had a timeline here on earth. Jesus had a goal to complete before his work or before he could lay down his life, before he could voluntarily sacrifice his life. He had a timeline of goals it was necessary for him to achieve. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The timeline and the goals he had and tasks were necessary to meet all the complexities of the law and the impact of sin on the world. Time was winding down. As our time we live on this earth decreases with each day we live, Jesus let them know his time was of the essence. He let them know I must work. I must do what my father sent me to do. He had a work ethic. Hallelujah. <laughs> From way back, 
The work ethic was established. There was no time to waste. Night is coming when we cannot work. Jesus broke it down into basic terms that his disciples could understand. In theory, we work during the day as the day only holds so many hours. But when the night comes, the options for rest are there. Jesus made it perfectly clear in that fourth and fifth verse, as long as he is in the world, he is the light. People of God, if there is no Jesus, there is no light. We see the impact of no Jesus in our schools, in many institutions. By removing Jesus, there is no safety. There is no light. Hallelujah. Darkness is leading in many of those facilities and establishments. But that's another discussion. That's another topic of review. Hallelujah. Expediency. Jesus let them know expediency was important. He had a focus. Time is of the essence. When witnessing people of God, expediency is important. When witnessing time is of the essence for those who are in need. In many instances, they have been waiting for you and for me to act or to move. Hallelujah. To follow the direction of God in our lives. They've been waiting for you and the God you represent. Hallelujah. And in this instance, this blind man had been waiting all his life for Jesus because Jesus clarified that neither the man nor his parents had sinned. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when he had finished speaking to his disciples, when he finished enlightening them, he got back to the importance of the matter at hand, speaking to what he saw, speaking to what he observed. He spit on the ground and he made clay of spittle and anointed the eyes of the man. Not certain why Jesus used the spittle. He could have said be healed. He could have touched him. But Jesus meets us where we are. He meets us at our mind set. This man had been waiting all his life. The thing is, there are times when things may not make sense to anyone but you and Jesus. He can send a word that will be specific to you and you only. And that word will motivate you. That word will propel you to do. It will propel you to action. Jesus told the blind man to go to the pool of Siloam, meaning sent. And the man followed Jesus' instructions. And the scripture says, and he came home seeing. Hallelujah. He followed Jesus' instructions and came home seeing. We've learned, hallelujah, no one was at fault, but God through his son received glory from this situation. Part two, the blind man receives his sight. Eight through 12 verses on that ninth chapter. The blind man came home seeing. Talking about verses eight through nine. His neighbors, his friends, 
Those who knew him were startled at his ability to see. They were startled as there were seemingly no cure to what ailed him. They were in shock. Hallelujah. <laughs> Could some of the neighbors also have been pondering similar thoughts as the disciples relating to what, how, and why? Again, the neighbors were astonished. They begin to speak among themselves and ask, is this not the man who was sitting and begging? They debated as some said he looks like the man and others said he was not. As we go through that eighth through the ninth verse, God will bring change to life, hallelujah, that will generate commotion. Glory, God will bring a change to your life that will generate commotion. Some will be startled by your change. Some will be astonished by your change. Some will question and even debate your change. But the blind man, the one who had the impairment, the one who had been waiting, he was happy, glad, hallelujah. He was excited about what Jesus had done for him. He was excited about the change and did not care who knew it. He confirmed, it is me. I am the man. I was who I was, but I am who I am now through and because of Jesus. I am changed. I can see I am different. We can identify, we can equate with the testimony, with the affirmation and confirmation of the man. Hallelujah. When we were in our sin, we were in spiritual blindness. But we thank God for the witness of someone who had the love of Jesus in their heart, who knew that we had a need. Glory to God. And when others questioned, hallelujah, that change. Some were skeptical about that change, as was the situation for that man then in today's lesson. Again, some were skeptical about our change, but we thank God for the sustaining power of Jesus Christ, the righteous, and the fact that when we are blind, he gives us the ability to receive sight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> the why, the how, and the what was the primary concern of his neighbors. People of God do not think. People do not have questions when life-altering changes take place effect. When life-altering changes happen, people have questions. Are you able to answer their questions about the life-altering change that has taken place in your life? The blind man spoke up. He did not get offended, but he spoke to it because the healing and his deliverance was more important than what people thought. Hallelujah. They wanted to know. They were curious. 
how just as curious as the disciples were about why he was blind, there were some who were now just as curious as to how he was healed. How were your eyes opened? That is the focus of that Tiffany 11th verse. They wanted to know how his eyes were opened. And he explains the man called Jesus. He answers their questions. He let them know that he made clay and anointed my eyes and told me to go to the pool of Siloam and to cleanse. Hallelujah. People of God, Jesus can cleanse us. Have you been to the pool of Siloam? The pool represented the cleansing power of Jesus to all who are sent. All who go to him seeking help, he can cleanse you from whatever ails you if you follow his instruction. Hallelujah. These individuals, they wanted to know where was this man? Where is this Jesus you are referring to? Talking in that 12th verse, can you imagine people of God, someone you see daily begging because of their plight and condition? Sometimes we see people in conditions and we accept them in that situation or even at times feel as if the situation is permissible based upon the circumstance. However, when someone comes to help provide aid or bring someone out of that state or condition, someone to know how, why, some are even jealous because in their mind, they believed that the circumstance dictated the situation and it was appropriate. I thank God for Jesus and the fact that he overlooked circumstances and situations. I thank him for the fact that he just does not pass by, but he stops to help regardless of how long we have been in a condition or state. Hallelujah. It does not make a difference to Jesus. Those who have had issues for years, Jesus can speak to your issue. But these individuals were questioning, where is he? The blind man said he did not know. Hallelujah. He was blind during his interaction with Jesus and did not see until after he followed the instructions of Jesus. Therefore, he truthfully answered their questions. He did not know where he was. People of God, if you can imagine being touched by a force that you could not see, you heard about, but could not see, that same force, hallelujah, hallelujah, gave you the ability to see by you following and believing in the instructions. I thank God for bringing spiritual sight to those of us who were blind and who have lost sight. As we explore part three and our conclusion of today's lesson, Jesus places needs before rules and regulations. Again, let us remember that Jesus places needs before rules and regulations. In that 13th through 17th verse of the book of John, hallelujah, we see this in Full execution. A need is something when you 
hallelujah, require it. It's essential. It's important for your survival. Rules are explicit. Regulations are principles governing conduct within a particular activity. And regulations are rules or directives that are maintained by an authority. Hallelujah. In part three, we see that everyone in the 13th verse, we see by reading the fact that everyone was not happy. People of God, everyone is not happy when Jesus does mighty and great things in your life. Some are grateful, some are thankful, but not all are happy. This is not anything new. We see it happened in biblical times. It happened then and it happens now. Hallelujah. Oh, but we must continue forward. You are no different than the blind man. But if God be for you, he is more than the world against you. And his being for you outweighs the negativity of those who question mighty and great things in your life. There's a term that is used and the term is hater. You, are, you have some who are not right. They need a conversion to take place within. They need the change. Hallelujah. Oh, from being blind to being able to see. Hallelujah. And until that change takes place, they are spiritually blind. And people do things often because they cannot see and because they are not clear. And when you do things because you can't see and because you're not clear, you do things that are off. Hallelujah. We realize this happens. We realize these people exist. Thus Jesus speaking directly to the need. Just we see this Jesus speaking to the need of his people before rules and regulations. As we continue in the 14th verse, we see this specifically. Hallelujah. Ah. They bring the man before the Pharisees, the Pharisees, that religious Jewish body we spoke of at the beginning of the lesson. They did not bring the man to or before a medical review board. They didn't bring him before anyone that could speak to a medical, hallelujah, verification or review. They brought him to those ha, who, glory to God, were authorities on the law. <laughs> People of God, sometimes we get lost with man-made processes and regulations. When we get caught up with these things, we miss the works of Jesus. We miss the power. We miss the direction. We miss the execution of his wonder. Jesus did something miraculous for this man. He restored his sight. But my God, he did it on the Sabbath. The miracle is awesome. <laughs> but many cannot believe their questioning was specific to the fact that it occurred on the Sabbath. Someone had a life urgent need 
but there were some who felt that it would have been better to wait another day as opposed to healing on the Sabbath. Glory to God. Jesus demonstrated he will come to our need regardless of when, regardless of rules, regardless of regulations. In that instance, in that moment, Jesus redefined the rules. Hallelujah. Jesus redefined the regulations just as he does rules and regulations in our personal lives that hold us, that place barriers around us. Jesus redefines rules and regulations. Hallelujah. Working on the Sabbath was forbidden. The consequence of healing on the Sabbath Hallelujah. These people again asked how he received his sight, questioning from the Pharisees. He explained again how it was done, what specifically Jesus did, and how he washed in the pool of Siloam based upon the instructions of Jesus. Again, people of God, Jesus makes us see clearly. I ask you one more time, have you been questioned about the change of God in your life? The Pharisees wanted to determine what Jesus did. Did he work? Did he fault? Hallelujah. Did he make an error? by healing that blind man on the Sabbath. Hallelujah. <laughs> People of God, I often hear us pray and invite Jesus in to locations, Jesus into our services. Jesus is ready and available to meet our needs, but sometimes our rules are so specific, they're outdated and they're not aligned with the gospel, and they're out of touch, that we exclude Jesus. Hallelujah. No healing, no deliverance, no visitation on the Sabbath. <laughs> Jesus again saw the blind man. Jesus saw the need and spoke to it just as he saw the Samaritan woman, regardless of the need, regardless of your background, regardless of your spiritual state, regardless of your DNA, Jesus will find you. Jesus will seek you out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Regulations and rules are redefined by Jesus. I encourage you to go out on a limb and trust God, accept Jesus. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the why. Jesus is the who. Jesus is the how. He is the alpha, the omega. He is the beginning and the end, as well as everything that happens between those two points, the point of start and the point of finish, Jesus represents everything. Hallelujah. And he will find you in the middle of your start. Glory. And between your finish, Jesus will find you. He will remember Move the blinders. He will restore your spiritual sight and make you victorious. He will redefine the rules and regulations that dictate your life. Praise God for you who follow us weekly. 
Our lesson next week will be the bread of life. It will be found in John, the sixth chapter, verses 22 through 35. It will be the 10th of May, and we will be celebrating mothers. Excuse me, it will be lesson number 10. <laughs> it will be the 8th of May, and we will be celebrating our mothers everywhere. Our prayer today, Father in heaven, I ask you to forgive me for any time this week that I made judgments about people, even if I didn't say it, but I thought about it. Help me to accept people for who they are and to see the best in them. I pray for those who are in need, and when you show me their need, I pray to promptly obey you in meeting their need, even if it is inconvenient. If it's money, I pray not to judge how they use it, but leave that between you and that person. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Please remember to give. Your giving options are displayed. And remember to tune in promptly at 11 a.m. for a powerful, impactful word of God. Praise God. Enjoy your week and be blessed in Jesus.